They gaps its head Skywalker bud here. In fact, I think I sound a little bit more like Darth Vader. Got a touch of the old laryngitis. I've got a shoe today that's larger than the list of changes that George Lucas made to the Star Wars series. It's the Hoka Skyward X. This is a shoe that I bought with my own cash. How does this bonkers clog hold up against some of the other Max Cushion models? Let's check it out. Thanks for tuning in people, it is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button, but also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. Dank, dank is shoe. This is a shoe I've purchased with my own Earth credits to test for you today. A quite frankly monster stack here in the heel. I'm measuring about 54 millimeters back here and approximately 48 millimeters in the forefoot. In my UK 11 or US 11 and a half, I've got 355 grams. It's quite heavy. 12.5 ounces, it puts it on par with something like the Adidas Prime X2 Strung or even the Invincible Run 3 from Nike. The Adidas coming in though, way more expensive than this one around about the same price as the invincible run now the midsole is using two different foams here there's like a sort of cage or frame i suppose of super critical eva you've then got like a sort of insert almost of a piba material that's directly underfoot and there's also a carbon plate as well they've managed to get the whole kitchen sink in it's certainly wide all right i've got 12.5 centimeters of width in the widest part here in the forefoot and about 10 centimeters back here in the heel so there's a lot more width in terms of a comparison against the prime x strung that's actually quite a narrow shoe in the heel i guess you could compare this more to something like the nimbus 26 from asics quite hard to actually measure the softness of the foams here i've measured lots of areas around this midsole sidewall and also some of the exposed areas on the bottom of the shoe they're all coming in at round about 30 to about 25 so quite soft really when it comes to the short agerometer scale with all good reviews you've got to start with the upper first I do quite like the mesh material used here on the Skyward X. There's a decent amount of width, not too much height here in the toe box. It's just a really nice quality fit. A very plush fit though. There's lots of padding here in the supplied tongue. A mixture of eyelets and these lace loops to get a decent sort of lockdown on top of the foot. I found I didn't need all that much pressure really due to the thickness of the tongue. It certainly appears to mimic the profile of the favorite Clifton from Hoka. You've got this very extensive heel flare. I can't say I've really noticed it at all. I know some people mention this is a bit like a pull tab or something. I could really do without it. It just doesn't really feel like it needs to be there. Could perhaps lower the weight a little bit getting rid of this. This silicon-like section here, this sort of external heel counter does a lot of the heavy lifting from that respect. There is an internal heel counter as well, which is reasonably wide and a few reinforcements around the toe box area of the shoe. I do quite like the fact this tapers away from the Achilles here. I don't think it's going to cause anybody any major problems if you get any rubbing back there and other shoes that are similar. So similar to that Clifton model, but there's stacks more midsole here. No pun intended. I think it's a pretty clean looking shoe actually, a really nice colorway here. You could call it the Great Britain colorway. I do quite like the off-white cream sort of laces here. Though, do be warned if you get the shoe wet at all, the dye seems to come out of the uh, red sections here, it gets directly onto the laces. It's a slightly thicker insole supplied by Hoka in the Skyward X. Tried out a few other Hoka shoes of recent time, quite thin insoles, not this one. It's pretty much a set and forget sort of effort here in this sky with x i managed to get a pretty good lockdown without even trying just a set and forget type situation toe box is breathable enough and quite containing it's not all that flexible though it is certainly one of those uppers that's designed for comfort really rather than like a race shoe this is certainly a trainer you can tell that literally by the materials used that being said though, there are a number of other shoes out there in this kind of category that feature much more in terms of the upper. They're a lot heavier and stuff, so I quite like that they've you know, reached a reasonable balance here in the Skyward X. Minimal overlays here on the lateral and the medial sides of the shoe. Tongue length is really on point as well. It just protrudes a little bit past the final eyelets, so you won't get any lace pressure there. I like it. I just wish they could have made it a little bit lighter, perhaps minimize the materials and get rid of this thing here. 
After my initial runs, I'm going to give this a 2.7 out of 3 for the upper. Midsole. Midsole. Midsole now. Midsole wise, off the bat, this is no Primex strung beater. You don't have the overt squash here in the Skyward X. It's a very controlled sort of midsole. I think that's partly down to that plate placement here. It's a really weird looking plate actually, it almost looks like a H kind of shape. I did find though after initial runs that all of the components take a little bit of time to break in and sort of bed in and it got better and better over time. Now, I've got about 14 or so miles into this one now and quite enjoying it have to be said. There's certainly some forgiving squash in that layer that's directly under your foot and bizarrely the shoe feels in no way as high stacked as it appears. Certainly the midsole is more of a cupped type effort. I kind of thought it was going to be like sections of the midsole but it's very much like the construction of that Vomero 17 where you've got that sort of SRO2 frame and then the Zoom X inside. But I do think that the two foams complement each other very, very well here in the Skyward X. Though their feeling of compression is nerfed a little bit by the fact that Hoka have introduced a strobel underfoot. It's kind of stitched in. We haven't had that in the Celo X1 or the Rocket X2. I was hoping that Hoka were going to carry on that vibe, but they haven't done that here in the Skyward X. I'd love to know what the shoe felt like without that. That's what made the Invincible Run version 1 so good. Now, this shoe is supposedly one for sort of absorbing the miles, perhaps if you're doing some longer efforts, getting that base mileage in and helping to protect you from the impact of the road. I found it a little bit clunky, I've got to be honest, at about 8.30 to 8.15 per mile. But as soon as I started pushing the pace, you can feel that kind of rocker here and the hoka starting to kick in somewhat. And it felt really good for me, around about 7 minutes 30 per mile. Anything faster than that though, and I felt that I was having to put in a lot of effort to move my legs. This is a very heavy shoe really for me. 355 grams is a lot of weight. Tim Gross, if you're watching, I dread to think what this will be in your size. It's probably going to be maybe over 400 grams. So yeah, a bit of a brick. So marathon-like pace for me is probably the ultimate usage for this shoe. Will I want to race in it? I think it's a little bit heavy for that perhaps though some people perhaps more heavy set runners could find this one very useful in that type of situation just for me being very tall and like a stick man it just feels like i've got a very very substantial clog on my foot not all that dissimilar i suppose to the prime x2 strung can't believe they made that shoe so much heavier when you had like the goat shoe in the previous version why did they do that i think this one's all about clocking up marathon pace miles in training it's certainly got the durability for it just minimizing the expenditure of effort and impact on the body i did do a few bursts at like sort of 10 or 5k pace absolutely not an issue that's not what it's designed for I'm trying to get up to threshold pace in this i think i managed about seven minutes per mile and that was really pushed me i feel really tired today so that is a bit of a teller. Can you feel the plate here? Well, I'd suggest at slower speeds, no. I think it's there more structurally to help the foams kind of work together. It certainly feels better than the Kinvara Pro, and it's certainly a little bit cheaper than that shoe too. I think that one was a tad too tough for me underfoot. Similar weights here, and certainly the outlays are a little bit less in the Skyward X. Bit of an odd one here. It fits in that mold of the Nimbus 26 or the Kayano 30. There's a bit more pop to this one though, I would suggest. It doesn't feel quite so bottom heavy as well. I think they've kind of distributed and balanced out the weight between the upper and the midsole quite well after my initial runs i'll give this a 2.6 out of 3 for the midsole outsole i think they've positioned well as a trainer there's lots of coverage here and some quite thick rubber as well the application is pretty generous you're not going to be burning through this one anytime soon quite a lot of cutouts here and ridges which provide some really good traction out there especially in some wet weather hoka have improved the outsoles on pretty much all of their range over the last year i'm really pleased about that this follows in the same mold as the celo x1 and the rocket x2 we got some really good sticky rubber here really great traction on cornering too the rocket x2 and the celo x1 have been really great in terms of longevity in terms of durability you know the uk weather's pre-testing as well people even now in april you never really know what you're going to get 
could be very wet, it could be very treacherous out there some days, and then bone dry, you know, within a few hours. But I think this one's going to hold up really well over time. Do you like the fact that they've introduced quite a bit of rubber back here into the heel as well? Again, it's going to protect that exposed midsole foam. Well, it's a little bit hard to clean, got to be honest, and these holes are quite large, so you're going to get some debris and rocks stuck in there. When I tested out the rubber in terms of the softness, it comes in at around about 67 on the short A drometer scale. That is pretty standard, really, and very close to what we had on the other Hoka shoes. Nike, take note, use some more durable rubber on the outsole of your shoes. You might not sell as many, but I think it'll improve your sort of customer satisfaction. So outsole decent so far. I've not been able to test it in some torrential rain or anything like that, unless I get the hose pipe out and get beast to turn it on or something as I'm running through it. We won't know, but, you know, I'll chime in with some thoughts in, you know, after a few miles or something. So a 2.8 out of 3 for the outsole, only lowered by the potential of larger rocks getting stuck in the midsole cutout, because, you know, it does happen from time to time. we got to talk value now. So a shoe I've picked up with my own cash. The retail on these is 185. I paid about 152 or something. I think if you're looking at this being a cheaper Prime X2 alternative, then yeah, it does that job. It's definitely a Kinvara Pro Beta. And if you can pick it up on a discount, I think it's not that bad. At retail, it's the same price as the Nimbus 26. I think it's doing a little bit more than that shoe. There's a little bit more to it. There's more tech. I mean, if you want that in your shoe, then... Yeah, it's here in spades. You've got loads of it here. There's plates, different foams and all sorts and a massive heel stack. If you want something that's going to protect you from the pounding, it'll certainly do that. I don't think this is ever going to be a shoe that anyone's going to pick up to, you know, run some very fast 5, 10Ks or even half marathons in. But if you're looking for a really great grippy shoe with loads of impact protection for a marathon perhaps, and you're not all that worried about time, and let's face it, Lots of people run marathons and they're not. It's actually a really well put together shoe, I have to say. All the Hoka shoes that I've purchased over the last like year or so have been really decent. No dodgy glue marks, no weird stitching or anything. I would suggest this shoe is also true to size. I've gone with an 11 here. That seems to be absolutely spot on in all the recent Hokas that I've bought. Used to go up a half size in Hokas. Don't think I need to do that anymore. So maybe they've switched up the last that they've been using on all of these new shoes. I'm gonna give this one a 2.6 out of three for value only lowered by the fact that it's a bit of a niche shoe for me. It's going to fit into a very specific level of effort within my training. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10.7 after my initial runs for the Hoka Skyward X. Bit of a niche offering this one, but I can see myself actually utilizing it quite a bit, getting in some of those sort of recovery type efforts and some steady sort of running. And maybe if I enter a marathon later in the year, this one could come in handy for those sort of marathon miles. Let me know if you picked this one up or you're planning to. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. You cats will know that I really love the band The Lemon Twigs. They have a new album coming out very soon. A dream is all I know. They've released a few tracks from it now, so we're getting a better picture as to what the album might be like. A new track, though, is called How Can I Love You More. It really does sound like something lifted from Beach Boys era sort of pet sounds tunes. There's some, like, theremin in there. The typical lemon twigs, harmonies as well. A very Motown sort of vibe to part of the track, and then it switches up to something that does sound like it could have been lifted straight off of Pet Sounds. These guys are certainly very invested in the past, in some of those sort of classic tunes from the 60s and 70s. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, due to the fact that they're producing like a really authentic representation of that. You've got the vibes there, but it's being delivered with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and I don't see there's anything wrong with that at all. Certainly Lemon Twig's right up there in terms of my favourite groups at the moment. Really looking forward to this new album. Hopefully it's out very soon. I think it may be out in May. I'll have to try and catch them if they do another tour. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed the review of the Skyward X. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like. Do comment below as well to help out with the old YouTube algorithm. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.